and world view. Good day, everybody. Andy White here. What you are about to hear is the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. I want to welcome everybody from all across the Fruited Plain and all around the spherical globe. Thanks for tuning in once again to this week's edition of Open Up the Doors. I am streaming live on my Open Up the Doors Facebook page, as is my habit. Please go on over to facebook.com slash faithfm91.7 and join in the fellowship and the conversation over there and shoot me some comments and thoughts throughout the broadcast, and I'll try to interact with you folks on Facebook. And, of course, we will be going to the phones as well in the second hour. Also, if you would like to follow me, I am on the Truth Social Network. Please follow me over on Truth Social if you are on that platform. It's my main, really my main social media platform these days with just interacting with people besides Facebook. But um, again, I'm, I like the free speech and uh, open uh, air community over there on Truth. So look me up at Andy White over there on Truth Social. Oh, by the way, something I haven't mentioned at all, and I keep really forgetting, it just popped in my head. I started an Open Up The Doors group page on Truth Social, and it's an open forum page. Uh, if you're over there on Truth Social, just look up Open Up The Doors uh, in the search engine or on my profile page, or probably in the search engine, I believe. Uh, you'll find it. Open up the doors, the group page. Please join the page. It's just like the groups on Facebook in a lot of ways, of course, without all of any censorship or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, just join the group over there on the Open Up the Doors group page and post, freely post. Um, it's an open forum. And it's really, I want to, again, build up the fellowship, the camaraderie over there with like-minded people. All right, one more thing before I get into what I want to get into. Um, best way to listen to Faith FM is to download the free Faith FM app if you are outside of the broadcast area. We have the app for the Apple platforms as well as the uh, Android platforms. Look it up in your respective app store and uh, listen to Faith FM 24-7. Christian pro, uh, broadcasting and programming here on the east end of Long Island. As I mentioned a moment ago, I will be going to the phones in the second hour, and I'd like to give out the phone number really early, uh, 631-725-269, because um, we only have one line. So write down the phone. It's, it's uh, you know... You know, first come, first serve kind of a thing. We don't have multiple lines to keep people on hold. So write the phone number down, 631-725-2069, and be the first kid on the block to call in during the second hour. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? Again, <laughs> I, I, I've got so much in my heart today, and so many things are, are, are going on. Um, I was per I was really perplexed as to what to bring forth this week because uh, of the fact that there is so much going on. It wasn't because I didn't know what to do. I, well, I didn't know what to do. It, what, what, what would be most, uh, 
opportune at the moment. I always try to sense what God's saying for these broadcasts, what's what people need to hear at that moment. You know, I could talk about China. I could talk about, because there's much going on with China. I could talk about Erdogan and, and Turkey and give an update there. And they're all they're all on the they're all on the on on the back burners. I, I was perplexed as to what to bring forth today because exactly that. I've got so many things I'm working on. And the Lord, I believe, really gave me a word for today that I'll get to in a moment. But having said that, along with everything else that's going on, some sad news. I, I, I just, as I was coming into the studio this morning, uh, I came across my news feed that uh, uh, great brother in the Lord, Pat Robertson, passed away earlier this morning, or maybe it was last night. I only saw the news, as I said, maybe uh, two hours ago. Uh, that Pat Robinson passed away. He was 93 years old, and uh, he had a he had a huge impact on the body of Christ. That's putting it that's putting it you know mildly. That's that's an understatement. Starting CBN back in the 70s or or early 80s, I believe he started back in the 70s with CBN. Um, and so anyway, I just want to mention that before I move forward with my uh, you know my prescribed broadcast that you know to to give honor to you know to pat robinson for all he's done maybe maybe we'll we'll talk about that in the second hour uh probably touch upon it in greater depth then but i certainly want to um acknowledge him and his passing and 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 our, our sympathies and condolences are of course with uh the robertson family uh and the the cbn family in a broader sense uh, our hearts and our uh, and our uh, our joy is with you. We know that Pat's gone to to his heavenly reward, and you know when 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 saints pass away, it's always a bitter, bittersweet kind of a thing. We 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 mourn with those who mourn, and we rejoice with those who rejoice. And and we don't pass from this world with 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 uh, without hope. Is the word I'm looking for. We have we have our hope as an anchor for our soul. So again, I, I just want to acknowledge the fact uh, that Pat Robinson passed away, and maybe some of you had not even heard that as of yet. All right, let me move on now with much that I have here, and and I've got so much here. It may it may I'm just going to take my time getting through this because there's a lot here, and and. You know, if it spills into the second hour, it spills into the second hour. I always keep the second hour of this broadcast open for phone calls and and for uh, interaction with uh, Pastor Doug um, when he's here. So anyway, seriously, getting buckled down now. And I'll, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I might seem right now. Uh, a, a little bit um, scatterbrained and, un, and unfocused. You know what? I am. I am because my mind right now is filled with multiple things going on. <laughs> so um, I, 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 I've, I've been having a hard time focusing. I admit that to you right now, live on the radio. Um, I could go off on to any bunny trail because so much is prophetically going on that I'm ready to explode. So I'm going to try and focus with some things that I feel from my heart are very important. Most of you in this audience are very familiar with Isaiah chapter 5 verses 20 and 21 where Isaiah says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And I want to use this verse today because it's it's the framework for my commentary today. As I've shared so many times before, there is an existential evil that exists in the world. There are things that are pure evil. And there is also a being, as you well know, who is the personification of evil. Jesus calls the devil the evil one. And Jesus told his people to pray 
that they would be kept and delivered from the evil one. Folks, evil exists. And it's inexplicable to me that there are actually many people who don't want to acknowledge that there is actually an existential evil, but that rather it's only a difference of viewpoints or, or someone's opinion. But the irony in that thinking, the irony in that philosophy is that it's the very evil powers and principalities themselves that have blinded the eyes of the unbelievers, that have deluded the minds of people, that has brought them to come to a place where they could actually den deny the actual existence of evil as such. And popular culture, popular culture has come to a place where people are afraid to call evil evil. None dare call it evil. To use a little bit of a play on words. None dare call it evil. Nevertheless, the fact is undeniable, folks, that there is evil. And there are evil people in the world. And I want to make an important point here. Not all people are evil. But all of us have done evil. We've all sinned. And when you sin, you enter into league with evil. And that's, a big, that's a big topic in and of itself. But here is the good news of the gospel. The good news of the gospel is that this existential evil can and will be one day finally and completely eradicated. In the meantime, however, it can, on a personal level, be repented from and even forgiven. The good news of the gospel is that God will forgive evil upon one's brokenness and repentance by virtue of and based upon belief in the work of Jesus' atonement. But... You've got to admit that you've done evil for this to happen. To find forgiveness, you must repent of your evil. To find forgiveness, you must acknowledge it exists, that you have even have fallen into it through your sin. You must confess the evil that you've done in order for it to be eradicated in your own life and to be forgiven of. The only way to eradicate the evil is not to deny it, its existence, but to call it out, to expose it. And that's where the battle lines are drawn, my friends. This is why the Apostle John wrote in John chapter 3, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light does not come to the light. Why? Lest his deeds should be exposed. That's why they deny evil. That's why none dare call evil evil, because they would be exposing their own sins. But I digress. But again, Isaiah said, Woe to those who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. You see, Instead of calling out evil, instead of calling something evil, the world says, let's call for tolerance. Let's call it being non-judgmental. Let's call it affirming. But don't you dare call it evil. Folks, when morally depraved perverts and drag queens engage in what God calls evil and abominable acts, don't you dare call it evil. That's what we're being told. That's the zeitgeist of the world today. When, when parents or adults bring little children and underage minors to be entertained by drag queens performing lewd and perverse acts, don't call it evil. It's just entertainment. Folks, 
the more that evil becomes normalized and rationalized, the more society is then pressured into calling evil good. And the more that none dare call it evil. Don't point out the fact that the emperor's got no clothes on when everybody's standing up saying, oh, clapping for the emperor. Look at his new wardrobe. It's evil. No. Hey, he's naked. And then you get stoned. But I digress. But here's the point. Or shall I say, I'll further the point. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. I read a... Uh, an article the other day about, about a survey that was, was done, Gallup poll, and it says this. It says that more than 70% of Americans, 70% of Americans say same-sex marriage should be legal. Up from, here was, here was the startling thing, up from 27% just in 1996. That wasn't that long ago. More than 70% of Americans say same-sex marriage should be legal, up from 27% in 1996. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. And matching last year's percentage, a new Gallup news poll found. Let me quote from the article. When Gallup first polled about same-sex marriage in 1996, barely a quarter of the public, I'm surprised it was even that high, supported legalizing such unions. But it would take another 15 years until 2011 for support to reach the majority level. According to the poll, then in 2015, just one month before the US, uh, U.S. Supreme Court's Obergefell versus Hodge decision, which, which uh, basically uh, legalized across America same-sex unions, they call it marriage. It's not, but again, I digress. But in two, 2015, Ob Ogerfell was, uh, Oger Obergefell, Obergefell, sorry, uh, legalized marriage. That's when it cracked the 60% level. See, a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. And now we're up to 70% since 2011. It was 60% then, up another 10% in the last uh, what has it been, 2015? Was that 2015, eight years ago? Wow. But as someone has said somewhere, yesterday's sin becomes today's compromise, becomes tomorrow's normal. And as I've often said, when you compromise with evil, evil always wins. This past week, another thing that triggered some of my thoughts for the week was that it was reported the other day that in New York City, they're setting up vending machines with free drug paraphernalia, with free crack pipes and Narcon for, for people to avoid uh, overdosing on fentanyl. You know, and they're doing this under the guise of compassion. They're doing this under the guise of, of being wise in their own eyes. Woe to them who are wise in their own eyes. And these vending machines, they're not giving out. They're not, they're not you know, uh, putting out, you know, uh, candy and, and, and soda and whatnot. They're putting out, like, things like what they're calling safer smoking kits. These safer smoking kits come with a clean crack pipe. Uh, a mouthpiece and lip balm for smoking crack and crystal meth. And the first of, of what's going to be several of these big blue box vending machines was installed in Brooklyn this past Monday. Again, folks, this is insanity. It's pure insanity. It's exchanging sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. It's it's. You know, I thought of this, another one of the woes in Isaiah, not to mention Habakkuk. Isaiah 5.11 says this, Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink. Okay, that's talking about alcohol, intoxicating drink, obviously. But the principle is the same. 
Woe to those who rise up in the morning that they may just go and, and, and take um, um, intoxicating substances. That they may, you know, just follow after their, their, uh, their drug abuse. That they may follow after their alcoholic abuse. That they may follow after this. They, be, they become enslaved, but the, the prophet said, woe to them who rise early in the morning. And now the, 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 uh, the, uh, the government in New York City, the, the government officials are now enabling this kind of behavior. Oh, they might think they're trying to save lives. I know they, they have the best of intentions. People who have the best of intentions, that's called being wise and prudent in their own eyes. You see, but Habakkuk, who was, who was um, a contemporary of Isaiah, he had a list of woes himself. And in Habakkuk 2, he says, Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbor. Woe to him who gives meth or fentanyl or, or enables his neighbor, pressing him to the bottle, pressing him to, to the crack pipe. Let's, let's modernize this. Let's update this. Woe to him who gives uh, a crack pipe to his neighbor, who, gives, who, 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 who enables his neighbor to pursue the intoxication and all that comes along with it, to make him drunk. Woe to him that you may look on his nakedness. And then Habakkuk says this, for those who, who, who do these things, who enable this behavior, you are filled with shame instead of glory. They think, they think this is helpful and compassionate. They've lost their minds, folks. But this is the fruit of an entitlement culture that eschews personal responsibility and accountability the same lie that began in the garden you can eat the fruit and indulge your lust you won't have to pay for it god really won't punish you for disobeying that's the lie that was a deadly lie from satan in the garden satan uses the same lie on people today to advance his mystery of lawlessness his mystery of iniquity Day after day, he's convincing masses of people that they can indulge their sins. They can indulge their evil deeds without any consequences or penalties. Don't you dare call it evil. The demonic lie that's blanketing America today is a false sense of peace and security. It's the idea that we can do whatever we please with no fear of of consequences do you know what would be really compassionate and far more effective how's about shutting down the out of control and open border how's about stopping the fentanyl trade by going to war on the cartels by sending in the military to shut them down that would be a whole lot more effective and much more compassionate but no that's not really what they want to do but I won't digress all that much just just keep those borders going let's just keep them open encouraging sinful behavior without any consequences and invite more crime the same spirit that's behind the open borders is the same spirit that's behind the, these vending machines in new york and other cities and don't you dare call it evil folks the fear of the lord is to hate evil the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth. And I'm going to say it, though none may dare call it evil out of fear of popular opinion, but when adults take little children and minors and give them over to mutilate their bodies, cutting off their body parts, young developing breasts, mutilating their sexual and reproductive organs under the auspices of gender affirmation. That is evil. That is not affirming. That is evil. They call it gender affirming. No, no, no. The Bible says that foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far from him when confused and foolish children say mommy i think i'm a boy when she's a girl or mommy i think i'm a i'm a girl when he's a boy they might feel like that but they're bound with, with foolishness they're children they might feel that way that they, that they might feel like they're, they're they're something other than what they actually are 
parents, you don't feed into that foolishness. You discipline it. Here's where true gender affirmation needs to come into play. If God created you a male, celebrate it and affirm it. If God created you a female, celebrate it, nourish it, and affirm it. But you see, those who have changed and exchanged light for darkness and darkness for light, they're prudent in their own eyes. They're prudent in their own sight. But the words of the prophets echo through the centuries. Woe to those who were wise in their own eyes. And I got to go to a break, but I want to say this before I go to a break. The people of God, you and I, can either stand up and call out the evil or remain silent. But to remain silent is to become complicit with the evil. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer famously said, silence in the face of evil is evil itself. And God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. The psalmist cried out in Psalm 94, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquities? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would have settled into silence. But folks, we are not called to settle into silence. And even if nobody else helps you rise up against the evildoers, understand that the Lord is there to give you boldness and courage and to be your help. And I understand that I know full well that we stand up and speak against evil, that the wrath of evil will come down upon our heads. But as I shared a few weeks ago, that is when also the spirit of glory and of God will rest upon your head as well. For when you are reproached for the name of Christ and for the sake of righteousness, the spirit of glory will rest upon you. And I'll grant you, I'll grant you it's not easy to speak up. I'll grant you it's easier not to speak for who wants to be the lone voice. No doubt it's easier to avoid calling out the evil for who wants to contend with the conflict and the confrontation of those who have been offended by your light. In a society that has exchanged light for darkness, who wants to risk the injustice of a corrupted justice system where the wicked and the evil go free, but the blameless and the victimized are incarcerated? I get it. I get it. It's far more easier to play the three monkeys of see no evil and hear no evil and speak no evil. Just ignore it. That's what many do. Just ignore it. None dare call it evil. For in a society that calls evil good and good evil, who wants to face the tyranny of the evil of their persecution and the persecution that will come along with it? But I'll have more to say on this topic, folks, when I come back. Got to take a short break. Here's Will McPhailin walking in the light. Stick around. My heavenly father... You know he called me All right, welcome back Walking in the Light with Will McFarlane Andy White here on the radio Faith FM tearing down strongholds Integrity and broadcasting here on WEGB 90.7 93.3 in that peak And WEGQ 91.7 in quad And I'm going to hop right back on my stream of consciousness And my thought progression here Because there's so much more I need to say But what has happened folks I say that rhetorically But what has happened and what is happening in America In New York City, the city officials are putting up vending machines for drug addicts and sex paraphernalia, as I shared a moment ago. In Pennsylvania, street preachers and Christians exercising their constitutional rights of holding signs with scripture on it and street witnessing are being arrested on public sidewalks. I'll get to that in a moment. But people who have fled, dissidents and Christians who have fled from China... And North Korea and Iran are publicly warning us in America that they are seeing the very things they fled from becoming manifested in this country. What has happened, America? 
the tyranny and the oppression and the persecution and those who have fled from that persecution, fled from communist Marxist countries, is now on the rise and the ascent here in this country. That's what those who fled those countries are telling us. They're seeing the signs of it here, and they're sounding the warnings, they're sounding the alarms, and they're asking, what has become of America? This past week, I want to read to you a little blip out of Prophecy News Watch that speaks into this very issue and also raised something that happened uh, last week as well in the nation's capital. Reading out of the Prophecy News Watch, um, the author wrote this. I believe it was Michael Snyder. I'm not sure. I think it was. But at this point, what has happened to America? He says this. At this point, things have gotten so bad that even children singing the national anthem is considered to be offensive. An unbelievable thing took place in our nation's capitol building when the esteemed Rushing Brook Children's Choir was silenced by Capitol Police in the middle of singing the national anthem at the United States Capitol. Imagine that, folks. You have a children's choir singing the national anthem in the Capitol, in the U.S. Capitol building, and they're shut down by the Capitol Police because it could, it could be deemed a protest. It could be deemed offensive. What? I can't even begin to wrap my head around that. But let me get back to the article. Despite having prior approval from congressional members to do this, this, uh, this, uh, this rendition of the national anthem, the police deemed their performance as a form of protest Well, okay, so, oh, that's right, you're not allowed to protest in the Capitol. Kind of ironic, but I digress. But of course, again, the Rushing Brook Children's Choir had been granted permission to perform in the Statuary Hall by South Carolina Representative Russell Fry, Joe Wilson, William Timmons during the the, the choir's well-planned trip to Washington, D.C. And of course... Rightfully so, the audience and the young singers were bewildered as their rendition of the Star Spangled Banner was abruptly halted for seemingly baseless reasons. Again, according to the report, the police said the singing of the national anthem could be considered offensive or provoke conflict. Really? 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 We can't have little children singing the national anthem in our nation's capital because it would be considered offensive or provoke conflict? What in God's name is that absurdity? I'll tell you what it is, folks. They have forgotten God days without number. They have forgotten our Constitution days without number. They have forgotten our founding days without number. Our society is rapidly becoming the exact opposite of what our founders intended and previous generations of Americans would vomit all over the place if they could see what we have done to the nation that they sacrificed so much to give us. America is being fundamentally transformed. Does that sound familiar? America is being fundamentally transformed into America with a K right in front of our eyes. Brothers and sisters, our nation is, whether you want to call it out or not, our nation is on a highway to hell and picking up speed. The spirit of lawlessness is rampant in our nation today. It's the very force behind the laws and legislation that seeks to banish God from our public discourse and ignore his divine laws. Remember back I'm going to take a little trip down memory lane. Remember back in March of 2021 when Congressman Jerry Nadler flat out stated, quote, God's will is no concern of this Congress by way of remembrance. And for context, the Congress two years ago was debating the Equality Act. And a very brave congressman, 
from uh, Florida, Representative Greg, Greg Stubbe, he stood up on the floor debating this Equality Act, and he said this. He said it was in opposition to Scripture. Quote from Greg Stubbe, the gender confusion that exists in our culture today is a clear rejection of God's good design. Whenever a nation's laws do not longer reflect the standards of God, that nation is in rebellion against him and will inevitably bear the consequences. And I think we are seeing the consequences of rejecting God in our country today. And this bill speaks directly against what is laid out in Scripture, Representative Stubbe stated. Amen and amen. Thank you, Representative Stubbe, for standing up, for calling out evil when none dare call it evil. But in his response to Stubbe, Natler then said, full quote, Mr. Stubbe, what any religious tradition ascribes as God's will is no concern of this Congress. And that, Congressman Nadler, or Nadler, is precisely the problem. And it's precisely the reason this nation is going to hell in a handbasket. The psalmist said, shall the throne of iniquity which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you, O Lord? No, no, no. But the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That's scripture. And this nation is quite literally being turned into hell because godless and wicked leaders such as the Jerry Nadlers and others and many others who have mocked God and have made God's will of no concern and of no consequence Nevertheless, folks, God will not be mocked for whatever a man sows, that also he will reap. And that goes not only for individuals, but for governments and nations as well. And we are all indeed reaping the consequences and the fruit of our leader's lack of concern for God's will and divine law. Furthermore, Mr. Nadler, just as an aside, you even get your facts and your premise wrong. Man's religious tradition didn't ascribe God's will to him. He declared his will to us through his divine law and through his creation. And now, everything that America was about is being turned on its head. Real quickly, I got to go to another break. But just this past week in Reading, Pennsylvania, a, 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 a Christian brother who was standing on the street corner with a sign, I can relate to this, was arrested within 30, within 60 seconds. He was arrested because there was a, there was, and they were across the street, a bunch of Christians. They, they were across the street holding up signs. They, they were, they were protesting and preaching. Not in that order. They were preaching. Maybe they weren't even protesting. I won't even say that, though they have the right to, but they were preaching because there was a a, 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 a a gay Pride Day rally. A pro, this is Pride Month, you know. Pride goes before the fall, but I won't digress again. But they were there to share the gospel and to witness for the truth in the midst of a society where none, do, none dare call it evil. And he was arrested on the sidewalk. It's all on video. You can go and watch it. I think I posted it on my Open Up the Doors page. But this is what's happening to America. When you watch the video, you realize that that police officer had no grounds, no grounds whatsoever to arrest this brother. Now, you may not agree with their tactics. You may not agree with their with the way they go about doing things. Not that they were doing anything wrong, but we have constitutional rights in this country. We have a constitution. We have a freedom of speech and his rights were violated. And I hope he wins this case. This is the breakdown because we've forgotten day, God without days without number. It's the spirit of the age. See, the spirit of the age isn't going to put up with anyone anymore. It's not going to put up with any of us Christians standing up and preaching right, righteousness any more than it did when those first apostles took the message of the gospel to the streets. Remember, Paul started riots where he went too because of a righteous invasion of truth. 
And I'm going to tell you something. Go to a gay pride rally on a public street with script, with scripture signs, and that is a righteous invasion of truth. I'm going to take a break right now, folks. I think you're getting you're catching my drift right now. I'll wrap up this first hour with a few more thoughts when I come back. <laughs> Heart, mind, and soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7, 93.3 in FE, WEGQ 91.7 in Quad. Just by way of program note, this first hour of the broadcast today re airs today, Thursday at 3 p.m., and also 1 p.m. on Saturday. If you'd like to catch the re airing, because you had to get into work or something or pull into your to the shopping center or wherever you were driving to. But besides re-airing it, we do also, of course, download uh, these uh, broadcasts to my YouTube channel as well as my Rumble channel. If you never subscribe to either or, or both, please do. Look me up, Andy White, open up the doors on YouTube. You'll find it. And subscribe, hit the little bell, and you'll be notified when we do upload these broadcasts and archive them there you can find me on rumble at aj white 777 or just um or just go into the search engine and put open up the doors i'd appreciate it so much really if you guys would subscribe and also if you go over there and, and see these videos please hit the little thumbs up hit the little like buttons because again the more activity activity the algorithms pick up on the more exposed these broadcasts get into the news feed and that's what it's about folks it's about reaching as many people as we can reach um going to be take, going to the phones in a few minutes after the top of the hour at 631-725-2069 631-725-2069 all right so i got a few minutes to wrap up this first hour and i just before i went to the break i was talking about this brother who got arrested uh in reading pennsylvania and when i was watching this whole scene unfold on the video and you could hear it very clearly the guy taking the video was 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 had a uh, really got a clear a clear video and got a, got got the dialogue back and forth pretty good but it really made me think about what free speech america yeah we're, we're the bastion of free speech but only for for leftists and marxists who burn down city streets but not for you christian not for you i mean the double standard and the select prosecution of laws is a complete corruption that's going on and I could probably take an hour just on that alone but again we're dealing with the 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 spirit of the age and I need to to tell you that when Christ when the Christian community prepare yourselves folks because we need to stand up and we need to understand that when we begin to stand up to preach the gospel of righteousness and to call out the evil that others won't call out, that's when the persecution will heat up. With tyranny comes persecution. Tyranny and persecution go hand and hand together like peanut butter and jelly or chocolate and peanut butter but definitely not as sweet. The leader of a watchdog group, a a Chinese brother who monitors Christian persecution in China, he came out with an article this past week. I saw it in Fox. And this brother, his, his name is Bob Fu. He's the president and founder of China Aid. And again, he documents the persecution that's going on uh, specifically in China but other nations as well North Korea and this is his quote this is what he stated in this article just the other day that he's seeing echoes of the Chinese Communist Party's playbook in the US and he's worried it'll get worse 
He said it's very shocking and horrible to see American society's transformation evolving from its constitutional basis. Fu was a student leader during the Tiananmen Square protests back in 1989. He wrote a book called God's Double Agent, and he, he and his wife were imprisoned in Beijing for leading house churches till they finally escaped here to America. But these are the warnings, and he says this. He says the similarities of what he's seeing in America right now. The similarities are very, very striking between the Chinese communist way of persecution and the American leftist way of restriction and even discrimination. Fox said he has observed with concern how the left in the U.S. is increasingly exhibiting dictatorial attitudes, both culturally and politically, by censoring speech and enforcing woke culture and not tolerating dissent. And he also pinpointed the alleged, not alleged, it's actually happening, political weaponization of the FBI and other agencies, and it worries him greatly, and he sees it escalating. And he's not the only one stating these things. You ever hear of Yonomi Park, a North Korean who's been on the, on the TV networks later, lately sharing her story, very young woman. She's echoing the same things, talking about the, 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 the rise in Marxism and communism and, and oppression and persecution, not in North Korea, in America, that she fled to from North Korea. And this is a major reason, folks, I've been, I've been talking about the things I've been talking about the last several weeks, about being prepared for what is coming. To echo, to echo Andrew Brunson, who was imprisoned in Turkey for years. You remember Pastor Andrew Brunson? And he gave a speech a while back saying that he doesn't think America is prepared for what is to come. But as I've shared many times, I believe I have a mandate from the Lord to prepare people for what is to come, whether they want to hear it or not. And sometimes I really wish I wasn't carrying this burden because sometimes it makes me very unpopular. And we all want to be popular. We all want to be liked. But I've got to, I've got to obey the heavenly vision. And God told me time and time again, prepare my people for what is coming. Andrew Brunson echoes that. He fears that, that the, the church in America has become so complacent and so unaware of what's going on around the world. And he could speak to it having been in a Turkish prison. And we'll speak of it some more. I'll, I'm going to end right here because I'm out of time for this first hour. We'll, we'll pick this up in some discussion in the second hour. Please call in 631 725 2609, folks. First hour is over. We'll gear up for the second hour. In the meantime, keep it right here on Faith FM. Be bold, be strong, be, stand firm in the faith that all that you do be done in love. I'll be back. Stick around. 